Hey folks, on this episode of Soft Plastics 101, we're just going fishing. We've grabbed a morning on the water, we've grabbed a few handfuls of our favourite Z-Man plastics and some jig heads to suit them, and we're just going to go out and fish one of our local systems and talk to you about the different structure and the banks that we're fishing, what plastics and jig heads we're using to fish that area and how we're fishing it. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll see what species we come up with. In these sorts of river and estuary systems, it could be flathead, brim, snapper, school dew, you never know what you're gonna catch, especially when you're hitting rubble patches and drains and different structure that we can find in these systems. So stay tuned. <laughs> that was a bit crazy, that. Sometimes the smallest rattles can turn into a reasonable fish, hey? That thing was like tap, 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 tap. Awesome fun on light gear too. These seven foot Seros rods have been awesome. And you can get them in a few different weights, which is cool. You know, I've got one to three that I love for flicking the real shallow stuff with TRD craws on a Ned Locks. Two to fours, awesome general purpose, brim, flatties, that sort of thing. And then three to six I like if I'm throwing heavier heads like a three eighth ounce for flatties or heavier heads for, for jewies and snapper and that sort of thing. But they're beautiful. Not, a, not an expensive rod, but man, action on them is just perfect. Good for casting pluckies, good for fighting fish. I can see some leader. He was pretty keen to eat that Slim Swims. Rattle, 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 rattle. Nice little trevally. That's what I thought it was with those crazy rattles, crazy rattles. Probably him and his mates having a go, fighting over it, trying to eat it. Put the net under him. Come on, buddy. There you go. That's a pretty, pretty cool start to the session. Trevally, always good fun. They love these rubble patches, you know, if you can find any sort of, any structure in your system, you know. Bridges, all those bridge pylons and that sort of thing, the Trevally love those. Anywhere where there's a bit of fast water movement and bait. And an area like this, we've got the current moving across these rocks. These guys will be cruising around in amongst that current, knocking off a few bait fish. All right, when you do get a Trevally, there can sometimes be more in the area as well, so it's worth having a cast around. And the other thing is, I've had a few double hookups and that on the flats, chasing trevs. If someone hooks up and brings a trev up beside the boat, just keep an eye out in case there's another fish with it and they can flick their lure in as well and then boom, double hook up. So we're getting back in the water and see what else we can come up with. Ready, buddy? Ease away, nice and strong. Beautiful. So that's that little Slim Swims, paddle tail plastic, done really well in the rivers and estuaries on the two and a half and the three inch. This is the three inch. So I'll generally fish the two and a half on a one o hook and I'll fish the three inch on a two o hook. And that'll, that'll sort of work for, you know, the, you'll still catch brim, but you'll catch flathead, you'll catch trevally, you'll catch other species as well. They all love that sort of thing there. And especially if there's some bait fish in that in the area, you're a pretty good representation of the bait fish. And that underhook tail on that plastic gives it loads and loads of action for a small presentation as well. Get it back in there. Oh! <laughs> I just got annihilated. I had a few taps going on there. And then that fish has just smashed it. Oh, that's not ideal. Break high up my leader. I should have checked my leader a bit then. Might have got roughed up it down in that rubble. All right, I've got another rod ready. Two and a half inch slimmy. Let's see how he goes. All right, we've hit the spot lock. After that rust, just, oh, that was pretty, I'd say it was probably just another Trev, but it was pretty cool. And um, the only thing is I must've had a nick in my leader. So worth checking your leaders regularly. Probably a nick from being down in amongst that structure and it's popped a fair way up my leader there on that nick. So a quick change. I've got a two and a half inch Slim Swims on here, the little fella. Quarter ounce 1 0 headlocks jig head. It's rigged and ready sitting there, so I might as well punch it out there and see what we can come up with. 
So this is a this is a prime bite time now. So they say low light conditions are, are your prime bite times. There's also less less boat traffic on the water, less noise and that out on the water. So that early morning, late afternoon bite is prime to get out there and, and hit your local and, and just work out your banks, move around and work out your system, fish the edges, keep an eye on your sounder for rubble, mark any spots that look like they're worth coming back to. And, and we've got the sounder going here. It's always good to just keep an eye on it for any fish that are moving through, that you can see moving through on the sounder, like that, that school of Trevally that came through. Also, just to make sure that you're up on those rubble patches if you are fishing rubbly areas and that sort of thing, or you're working your ledge, make sure you, you stay in contact with the area, the structure that you're wanting to fish. So we've got the electric on the front there as well. What that allows us to do, we've got spot lock on that electric. So we can spot lock, hold it in an area, work the area pretty well, click the spot lock off, drift back down till we see fish moving through or good structure again, spot lock, and we can work that area again. If you don't have an electric motor, you don't have a big sander, you can still catch these fish. You just, even, even a fairly basic sander is, a, is better than no sander because it'll give you an idea of what's down there. It'll give you an idea of the structure, an idea of fish coming through and that sort of thing. And if you don't have the electric, you can use your wind drift and your tidal drift to work you over the area effectively. And you can even anchor in an area if you want to work a ledge or work a rock bar, you can anchor so you're off it and, and work back onto it as well. Fish on. I think we might call it after this one. We've hit our rock bar nice and early in the morning. We've got our you know, nice solid trev for a bit of fun. Put a bend in the rod. We dropped a little pinky. Here's another little pinky. Good fun on light gear. You know, we're only fishing six pound, eight pound, 10 pound braid with 10 pound liters. Not a big pinky. But the good thing about these rock bars and these early morning bites is your next one could be, you know, a couple of kilos. So where there's smoke, there's fire. When you get these little fellas, worth hanging around to see if you can find a big one. So there you go, early morning rock bar. We won't muck around. We'll go and see if we can find a different type of structure and talk you through fishing that. It's blowing. Oh. So we think this may be a dewy that we've got here. So always a good idea if you're, if you're out in a bit deeper water and you're working up onto a shallow edge, just keep an eye on your sounder because we noticed some fish coming through here a bit deeper. Oh, that is a cracker brim. That was not what I was expecting, but we're not gonna argue with that. <laughs> That's a tank of a brim. Yep. Oh, eat it dude. Might be Trev, is it, or something? That's got a bit of grunt. <laughs> All right, we're chasing flatties along a, an edge here. So basically, we've got a couple of hours of tide left. Tide's dropping out. And uh, we're just hugging this edge, fishing the drop off. And I'm working in, we're probably in a couple of meters here with the boat, spot locked on the electric. We're casting up into Oh, probably 40 centimetres of water. And we're just fishing the lure. So we've got a quarter ounce head with the three inch slim swims. And we're just hopping that lure off that shallow area and letting it fall down the drop off. So the cool thing about fishing an edge like this that drops into two metres is we're an excellent chance of a flathead on the edge. Once that lure drops over the edge and falls into two metres of water, then we are up for some other species. Maybe snapper, maybe brimbos, other sorts of species as well in that deep water, or this one here, potentially a jewfish. That's a nice solid fight, hey. Fishing the Seros, two to four kilo rod. Perfect for throwing those light lures. Ideal for flatties. Oh, it's a Trev. I thought we might have been up for a Dewey or a Mulloway then, but a Trev's nailed it as it fell off that ledge. Not a bad little Trev. So the target species was the flatty up in the shallows. But as we were saying, you can catch a lot of other different species as well as that plastic comes down that ledge. So 
Not the mullet way I was hoping for, but still good fun. Puts a good bend in the rod. And this little two to four kilo Seros, Akuma Seros rod's handling that pretty nicely. A Pixel reel, 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader. Not happy, this fella. Just about run out of puff. Got to crank the drag up a bit or I'll be getting called Hollywood drag if I, if I keep that working like that. He's got his head in the run. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Some good fun flathead bycatch, that's for sure. Especially on that light gear, you know, on the flatty gear. Handled him pretty well though. Good fun size Trevally. Nailed that little three inch slim swims. So that three inch slim swims and midnight all, that's a good, good plucky for a variety of species. Still small enough that your brim and those sorts of species will eat it, but great for flatties. Trevally, Jewfish, all those fish that we're likely to encounter today fishing this ledge and drop off. There you go. Good, solid, fun fish. I'll put him back in the water. Fish on. Little Moses. So we're working along a, a rocky ledge, getting a few rattles, so probably these guys were hitting the plastic. Just drifting and working the plastic out from the edge and into the bit deeper water there. Hopes are for a Dewey or a Trev. We'll see what we can come up with. Don't get me in any structure. Don't get me in any structure. <laughs> oh, gold. Just cast that one down, current. There's a bit of rough. Whoa, don't go in there, don't go in there, don't go in there. Oh, oh, there's a bit of structure there, yeah. And he found it. <laughs> oh, that felt all right, eh? Rub me off in the structure, I'm not happy. That was a pretty solid fish, a lot of weight in that. Start again. All right, we hit that rubble patch first up this morning for a few fish. And then we, we hit a ledge, moved up with the current, hit a ledge, worked the ledge, and um, caught a couple of fish off there. And we're chasing the current up, and we found an area where it's nice deep water and some snags on one side, flats and weeds up on the, weed beds up on the other. So we've got a couple of little Moses perch out of the deep side, and then noticed some fish coming through on the sander, which were probably Dewey's coming through on the other side. Flicked a cast right up there in the shallows and didn't even get to the Dewey's before this little flatty ate it on the way out there. So again, just that natural bait fish color in the bad shad in a three inch slim swims. On a heavier head here because of the run. So to manage the run, we've got a three eighth head with a two O hook. So still a small hook, still a small presentation, but because there's a fair bit of run here, we've gone a bit heavier with the head to get that small presentation down to the fish. And that's not a bad flatty. So we've got a fair mixed bag already, but we'll keep, keep plugging away and see what else we can come up with. Oh, angry. <laughs> Love the sound of the screaming drag. We're in a fair bit of current here. I may have to take the spot lock off and chase this. All right, I'm gonna chase after this because it's taken a fair bit of line off me. Feels like a pretty solid fish. <laughs> oh, that was wild. <laughs> my school, my spool was absolutely emptying rapidly there, up on the, up on this bit of a flat here now. That was crazy. I was on the lecky, on spot lock. 
I just couldn't get off spot lock and get away quick enough onto this fish. So we fired up the big motor to chase it. So where we're fishing there, that's pretty deep water and there's a fair bit of run still. So I switched over to a jerk shad profile, so no tail action. So that jerk shad profile allows you to get the plastic down there quicker in the current. So it was a long cast up current, half ounce 4.0 with a four inch centered jerk shads and just let that centered jerk shads find the bottom and then we just hopped it back toward the boat just off some rubble that we'd found. That little Apixor is loving it. <laughs> Apixor XT. Seros rod, I think it's only a two to four. Still okay for throwing those half ounce plackies. Half ounce 4.0 headlocks HD. So nice, nice heavy hook on this. So hopefully we just haven't been swallowed by the fish and it's and that hook's hooked nicely in its gob. <clears throat> We've had a pretty good morning session really. A few hours on the water, start on a rubble patch, catch a few different species, work a ledge, catch a few different species, found a bit of deep water, worked an area there and also picked up a flatty off the shallow edge, finish it off in some deep water with what feels like a pretty solid fish. Lucky my mate on the camera is pretty skilled with, <laughs> with dri boat driving and filming. If we get a bit shaky, it's all good he's driving the boat as well. <laughs> oh, good fun, hey. Good fun, gotta love it. Come on, buddy. Most fish are lost at the boat. We don't want to lose him at the boat, so we're just taking our time. There's some colour. Looks silver. Oh yeah, she's a nice Trev. Nice Trev. Pretty awesome what you can come across, you know, just fishing your local rivers and estuaries. We came out this morning hoping we might get a snapper early on that rubble patch. We we couldn't get a snapper. We got a couple of little, little pinkies. Couldn't get that snapper we wanted. But we did pick up a Trev this morning and a bit of mixed bag of stuff. And um, yeah, this is a solid Trev to finish with.